Dr. Alex Mayer is a former NASA engineer and the CEO of MentorBox, former CEO of Zeusk, and he has had over a billion dollars in sales. He's also the business partner of Ty Lopez, who you might remember from the Here's My Lamborghini in My Garage viral video. Here in my garage. I wanted to talk to him about testing billion dollar business ideas because his approach to testing is to go all in if there's amazing results or if results are lackluster, to throw the experiment out, even if you made money. So here are some of the takeaways from our conversation with Alex Mir. First, I wanted him to outline his approach to testing new business ideas. We, every weekend, we launched a new app or a new idea. And it was never complete. It was never pretty. It was never completely finished. But the goal was start developing it. So we came up with the idea by Friday night and we start developing it Saturday and Sunday and we will completely push it out by Sunday evening. So that was that was a method we were pursuing. At Experiment 27, and actually with all of my businesses, we're huge believers in testing as well as evidenced by the name. I think you can try a million things, and if you just try more than the next person, eventually you'll succeed, as long as you're willing to abandon a concept when it doesn't work. Which brings us to our next point. How does Dr. Mayer know when to abandon a specific business? Yeah, so when I started that process, I was, I want to say, 24 or 25. So, you know, I couldn't start a company earlier and I wasn't really, I didn't grow up wanting to be an entrepreneur. I grew up wanting to be a scientist. So I think I would attribute some of it to being a scientist by the time I became an entrepreneur. I was also a little bit older. So I had a scientific approach and I, you know, I had developed it, developed that approach meaning systematically testing things and uh, killing experiments if they're not working. That was huge for me and speaks to when something's great, you know, and then when something's lackluster or good, you might not know. It's a lot more obvious when something's amazing than when something is just subpar. I'll use joke writing as an example because it's something I've been doing a lot recently. When a joke is hilarious, you'll laugh so much that it like changes your bone composition. But when a joke isn't hilarious, you can still fake a laugh and trick yourself into thinking a joke is actually good. It's only by putting a neutral joke and a great joke next to each other that you can see that the neutral joke is actually bad. And it's the same with business. It's only by putting an amazing business concept next to one that's lackluster that you'll see how much better the amazing business is and how much more possibility there is for an experiment that actually works. I wanted him to go into more detail on committing to an idea that doesn't work because it's a mistake a lot of us make. I value people more than companies, more than products. So that's my hierarchy. At the top, people, team, you know, your coworker, your family, yourself even, then company, then product. A lot of entrepreneurs get this upside down. They're too committed to a particular product, even though the market really doesn't want a product, even though it is a product that is hard to sell. So it makes a bad company or a bad business. And then everybody around you, your employees, your investors, your your family suffers because of your commitment to a bad product idea. To me, it's actually a selfish thing. So when people say I'm committed to this product idea, I'm like, well, you're trading off. So when it's not working, the market doesn't want it. You're actually trading off that passion, that commitment to a product versus a lot of other things that in my opinion are more important. Which brings us to our next point. Your goal should be to prove that an idea isn't good. Actually, your goal should not be to prove that an idea is good. Your goal should be to prove that an idea is not good, meaning your goal should be to just cross things off a list. So that's how I have it, like literally the opposite of a lot of other entrepreneurs that I see that their passion literally is driving them to a corner. And I tell them, listen, we are people we are more important than products. We are more important than ideas. We are more important than companies. So the last thing you want is to suffer you and people around you for a particular idea. So try to actually scratch ideas, cross ideas off a list. So do the other way. Say, is this idea worthy of my time and, and attention? And given today's tools, you can build it really quickly, test it using ads, if you are not sure if the traction is there or not, launch two, three more and then compare. That's at the very high level how I think about the entrepreneurial process, especially for first time entrepreneurs. 
In science, they call it the null hypothesis. So you're trying to create experiments that will disprove that what you think is correct is actually correct. That's the exact opposite of what most people do with marketing experiments, which is trying to prove themselves right. That leads to biases and that leads to ultimate failure. Or worse, settling for something that's not the best it could be. Then if we're talking about experimentation, it just makes sense to talk about when an experiment succeeds, how do you scale it up? So the first thing I did, it was to launch Facebook ads to a funnel to see how much it converts, basically. The CPA, if you will, cost per acquisition. If I am not mistaken, the first ad was a, a picture ad. And he mentioned paid advertisement, so I wanted to know, why is he such a big fan of paid advertising? I love um, paid advertisement. In, in other words, this is how I think about it. And I know that there are people that come from different schools of thought. There are three buckets or three steps. First layer is lead generation. Second layer is lead capture. Third layer is lifetime value capture or management. So the first layer is lead generation. And I think of it as like units of power. So I think of it, let's say you have 10 units of power. I think organic word of mouth is one way to grow, but it's probably one out of 10. So if you're growing your company purely organically, you're basically at 10% of your potential. If you fully optimize it, you're at 10% of your potential. So I love paid advertisement. The paid advertisement and growth hacking is literally the remaining 90% or the remaining nine units, out of which five units is probably Facebook and Insta. Uh, three units are Google and uh, YouTube. One unit is everything else combined, retargeting, ad roll, Twitter, LinkedIn, and all that. And then one unit organic. That's how I think about it. Now for different businesses, it's kind of different. But if you're growing your business without paid advertisement, you're kind of missing out. Ty Lopez had that huge win with his In The Garage video. So it makes sense why Dr. Alex Mir would be into paid advertising. Also, Zeus, his business before was a dating app that also grew with mostly paid advertising. And to get super tactical, I wanted to talk about budget. How does he budget per experiment? My thing is about 50 conversions and whatever is conversion. If it's a purchase, if it, it could be, you know, a walkthrough to a retail store, it could be an email submit, an opt-in, uh, but whatever it is, or it could be like a phone call scheduled, whatever it is, uh, you need about 50. And the reason I say it is because the first 25 is just you're trying to, you're probably still debugging your funnel and your ads. The next 25 is where you can actually measure uh, what is the overall cost per conversion. And you can, I mean, if you have more budget, you go to 100. So if it is, is mo for most projects, uh, you can get to an email, you know, by f a few dollars uh, for an email submit, for an opt-in, for a for form opt-in. Uh, so depending on cost per conversion, that budget changes, but I want to get 50 conversions minimum. A link to Dr. Alex Mayer is down in the description below. Check his stuff out. And if you want marketing support for your digital agency and you sell anything from branding to advertising to front or back end web or mobile development, check out experiment27.com. And if you want the exact script we use on client calls to close new business, you can get that for free in the description down below. If you like this video and you wanna help the channel, I would love if you would share this with a friend or two. Only if you think they'd get value though. Thanks for watching.